Today we're going to start working on this truck. I bought this from a friend of mine. Um, I don't know if it's been two years ago yet, but it's been sitting around waiting its turn uh, to get something done with it. He he lives near 500 miles away, bought it local to me. He was going to fly in or bring a truck and trailer it home, but his business model kind of changed, so and he really wasn't interested in taking it back. He sold it to me. Here we are. I bought the truck, I looked at it, and there's a lot wrong with this truck. I mean, just the fundamental setup is just really bad. If you look, I'm gonna get straight on with that axle right here, I'm straight on. Um, you can see we have more behind the, the axle than we do in front. I mean, that's never the way you want a, a dump bed set up, for sure, if you're hauling any weight to capacity. I mean, if you were hauling everything ahead, I guess it'd be okay, but uh, this, this is just too much weight here. You lift lift off the front steers uh, it's just not a good combination um, it's four-wheel drive truck and it has a boss nine uh, nine foot two snow plow on it and it came this way uh, when I bought it and we have the snow plow for it well the problem is that whoever put this together um, made some errors uh, and one of them is this drive shaft um, this has got a big transfer case right here that interrupts the drive shaft coming out of the transmission. So when they did this, the drive shaft is too long and you can see the yoke coming through the end cap. So if the yoke's coming through the end cap, that means that the splines back here where they taper off, um, it's jamming into them. It doesn't have any travel in here like it should. So when the suspension travels up and down, this she needs to go in and out because of the arch that it works with so it's at its shortest length parallel when it goes up it comes out when it goes down it goes out the problem is it's going to go in between all that so every time it bottoms out it starts to vibrate and that's unacceptable um, another problem was this is this is like your typical city truck it's really not meant for highway use and he needed to drive it 500 miles home you can see the frame it's actually in really nice shape. It's a double frame with almost no rust jacking whatsoever. It's absolutely beautiful. Um, and again, it's a four-wheel drive. It's a DT-466 mechanical. The cab is in fantastic shape. Underneath the cab and the firewall and the cab mounts are all in good shape. Um, so what we need to do is we need to turn this into a truck that's more um, set up properly and more suitable to people. So the first thing we're going to do since now I have sold this bed I didn't do anything with it until I sold the bed because I didn't want to I didn't want to take that bed off and just have it laying around here in my way so I have now sold the bed so we got to get it off the problem with that is when they built this bed they used a steel pin to go from one side to the other through the scissor assembly which is fine this is not a hardened pin and it is stuck we've been able to move it roughly three inches here that's about all and it will not move anymore and i have heated i have beat on it we've used a kingpin on that side to try and shove it and it is just stuck so that being said we're at a point now where i'm just going to cut it i was trying to save the pin but we're just going to cut it there's enough room in between here that i can get in there with a sawzall pretty easy i can shove the bed to the other side and get in there and i should be able to uh cut that pretty simple being it's just mild steel not hardened steel but we got to get this off this thing would be much much better suited for a 10 foot bed and uh it is a pto driven a transmission driven pto it's got 179,000 is what it shows on the cluster of course it's so old and it's an international cluster that i don't know if it's right but if you look at the the condition of the engine i guess we'll just show you So you see the condition of the radiator. And it's got the half and half radiator, half intercool, half radiator. And you look at the engine, like there's no real leaks on the engine anywhere. And the firewall's nice. It's very, very, it's very possible that it is 179,000 miles. Um, but in order to make it the kind of truck that I want, we got a lot of work to do. Like you can see, it used to be 
white and uh, it certainly would be much better if it was white again I don't paint vehicles but this might be one that we we try I'll have to see where we're at when we get done with it or we get to that stage if it's justifiable or not but the thing runs and drives well it's a 33,000 GVW or 32,000 GVW truck I don't recall um, it is a six-speed manual transmission and it is not the six plus one it's a straight uh, six-speed I believe that's a yeah it's a straight six-speed uh, instead of having the low gear behind like you come over this way and forward is reverse and straight back would be low instead it you come over this way and forward for reverse but the next hole towards the dash is first there is no low hole um, which to me is a more desirable transmission and of course it has the controls here for the for the uh, salt spurter that they had which we don't have and uh, you know this is probably the strobe lights and fuel diesel fuel heater here pretty interesting and here's how you turn the uh, full wheel drive on and the front axle lock which is pretty cool so it's got a lot of good good things to it it needs some stuff like the seat it needs the interior done up which you know i have a guy so i guess we're pretty good there the control for the boss plow i tucked up underneath here and uh yeah but you know the there's a good base here so like I said, we just got to get this thing off first. Like, and that's, it's, I thought it would be, I was hoping it'd be simple, but not the case, but whatever. Since it's stuck at that one point in there, he's taking this hole saw and trying to cut just, just around it enough to uh I'm cutting the aluminum not the steel yeah to free it up so, so i'm hopefully gonna create a big enough hole and enough space it'll come out i was wondering if when we beat on that if we kind of mushroom that out and the inner block they welded in there was a tighter fit than this was so it might be jammed up on that so i thought if i took this and you know cleaned it all up maybe it would come out i really need to get a better Milwaukee drill because i gotta cool this one down It's not a fuel, it has brushes. And I don't want to cook another one, so I'm already having troubles with it. How much further do you think you have to go? I don't know. Let's see right here, right there. So I'm about one third of the way through. Nothing there. So he decided to go ahead and try to pound it instead of um, cutting it the rest of the way, and it went way in, like it's almost there. It's coming out. Enough to where I'm afraid to hold the pin because it's too close to my hand. Kingpin. Okay, so we drove a second kingpin in there, and it's we were out of room, so we're going to put a third one through there, and that should do it. Yeah, and listen, for all the safety police out there, man, I got more safety measures, and I take your safety into account more than my own, of course. I got more safety measures in place so this doesn't fall and hurt anybody than you guys will ever think of, so just 
don't don't pollute the comments. Don't with, go there. Yeah, just don't don't be that guy because nobody wants to hear it. It's not our first rodeo. So we decided to try tapping on the the rod we're trying to get out, and he put the bolt back in it so he can like hammer, and it is moving. So yeah, that's aluminum filing. So I think we'll be able to go ahead and get it out the rest of the way with uh, what we're doing, which is good. Maybe. Man, you would think it's right there. It's probably bound up a little. Yeah. It's close. Yeah. Is that, good? Is that light bracket going to be in the way? I don't think, because you can see right here where the aluminum starts, so we can't be, but... I don't know, an inch. Oh, okay. Oh, Finally. Yes. He's been beating on it back and forth. So was it the mushroomed end, do you think? Probably, because you see how it, how we clean the end of it off with a circuit of the hole saw. See how it dug into it? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, okay. Oh, finally. Now to get the kingpins out. The kingpins. Grab the kingpin. Okay. All right. So the pins out, and we put the kingpins back in just enough to grab the silt, the hoist, because we're gonna we're gonna let this down now. It's staying up because I've removed my safeties. The grate all has it, but it's a power up, power down. So. We have to relieve the pressure on the bottom and let it return to the reservoir so that it can come down so we can get to the back hinge pins. And I want it sitting on the frame when we do that. So now you're going to get in there and push that thing lever forward to release the pressure, hydraulic pressure. Okay. for the step. That's a big step. And then you have to wait to pull them when uh, when we lift the bed because it got a little bit of a bind on it. Oh. Because it's holding it up right now, holding the scissor assembly. So next we gotta get back here and get these bolts out. We're going to take them three bolts out of either side. we got one marker light wire to cut, and that's it. Hmm. She should be ready to come off. Cool. If these come off, we may have to cut them. I don't really care either way, but whatever. They look a little crusty. Yeah. I've seen marks. Well, true to form, with, you know, steel going through aluminum, the bolts on these hinges were just awful to get off. But they're off, the wiring's cut loose, so now we are ready to lift this thing off. So before I lift it, I've got my chain set up, and I'll do a test lift and see if we're balanced, how close we are, because sometimes it's deceiving. Like we have, we have gates on the rear and all this, but we have a bulkhead on the front too, so, you know, do our best guess. Well, it's finally ready to come off. We had a really, one really stubborn bolt in the back, um, but we finally got it out.
get the roll back out. All right, I got it on the roll back just fine. I've got two straps over top of the main beam. One is here, it pulls the bed back. The other one pulls the bed forward. And then I have four lasso straps. These are wheel straps that uh, they're just sewn like this. And then I just uh, run it through down to my bed. So that'll hold it. I'm just waiting on the uh, guy who bought it to call me back and see if he's ready. I told him it'd be today or tomorrow. And then he called me first thing this morning. He says, you bring that this morning? And I told him, I said, I'm taking it off right now. People are impatient. So then it's off and it's lunchtime. I message him and there's no answer. Now it's going on two o'clock. Funny how people work, isn't it? So this is a little better look at the frame now. And you can see it actually looks pretty proportionate. Now, with the exception of a few things um, when the dump bed was on it from from the end of here out to here is almost two feet more so that's why it looked really really odd so whenever I'm doing a truck like this I try and figure out you know where did it start life what was it I mean what how was it to become ordered this way because this double frame looks like it's factory original stuff because uh, it goes all the way up to past the front leaf spring hanger it comes clear into this area here so when when i'm looking at this the first thing i do is i look at the wheelbase the sticker inside the door tells you what the wheelbase was i think it was 158 152 uh, 152 and when i measured it it's still the factory wheelbase so we know that the axle hasn't been moved, so that's one part of the puzzle. Next thing is, this is double framed. For a wheelbase this short, something had to have quite a bit of strain on it to need a double frame. Not only, it's not just a double frame from there to here, like International does so often. They'll run it to here, stop, and then they'll use a shim on this mount the same thickness as the double and just bump it out and a lot of times they just use a the l overlay double frame it's not the case on this truck this tra truck is a full c double frame with a flange on top and bottom all the way to the rear now, i don't know what the original frame length was but i do know that axle hasn't been moved we do know that there's a bunch of holes here that are drilled um, pretty consistently as far as placement and they're identical side to side and then there's three on the top over here and there's three on the top over here so that leads us to believe that what and you see there's like no holes for equipment up here to speak of just cross members so it leads us to believe that whatever reason they needed this this double frame that load was back here whatever it was so if i was guessing i'm gonna say this was a bucket truck it started life at a bucket truck and that would explain the double frame how long the frame is that would explain the four-wheel drive the high ground clearance um, it would also explain why it's in good shape and low miles because bucket trucks a lot of times don't go a lot of miles they just idle a lot it would explain an awful lot of things. It has trailer brakes, which makes sense because it probably was outfitted before. You can see how it used to have pinnel hooks. So it probably had pinnel hook on here. It pulled like a communications spool on a trailer, a spool of communications wire or electric wire. So I believe this originally was a bucket truck because that frame hasn't been stretched. That's, that's factory stuff. I, there's no splice anywhere. So, anyways, that's what I think it was. So now the question is, um, you know, where do we want to go? What do we want to do with this? What is, what is the best upfit for this truck to make it the most sellable, profitable truck? So what, what we have is a 96, shows 170,000, 179,000 miles somewhere in there. It doesn't matter. It's so old. It's exempt. It's we're going to call it non-actual. Even though the engine's extremely clean, it's 210 horse, and I don't question that this is 179,000 miles. There's no leaks, there's no puddles, there's no nothing. The engine tag's still there. 
you know the radiator looks the part it's the half and half radiator half intercooler half radiator the firewall looks the part I mean I don't I don't doubt that's probably the actual miles but regardless we're gonna call it non actual because of the year and age but so now we have to figure out what is the best thing the so you have to take into account it's full drive so what I thought originally was this would be a great service truck because we could put a 11 foot or 12 foot service body on here as long as it's 84 cab to axle and you could have a crane mount in the rear of it because you're double framed all the way back and that's very attractive to a lot of guys to have full drive service truck with ground clearance like this especially if you work on construction equipment or you know off-road trucks or stuff like that um, this would be a very attractive truck probably not as attractive with a snow plow for a service truck but it'd be nice to have that PTO run a crane uh, the PTO probably wouldn't run an air compressor because air compressors have to spin faster so it would take a second one for that but uh, yeah, this would make a very good service truck four-wheel drive. But if I go dump truck, then we don't want 12 foot. We want to go to 10 foot, which is going to take us to right about, oh, probably this area right here, I'm guessing. And then we put a hitch plate on it, and then it's a full double frame front to back. I think it's a 32,000 GVW truck. So then the four-wheel drive is attractive, and because of the plow, the four-wheel drive is more attractive. So that would be a possibility. Regardless, whichever way I go, we need to get these angle irons off the frame, get rid of this hoopty, horrible hitch on the back. We'll have to clean everything up. We'll have to sandblast and repaint the frame. We're gonna have to paint that cab. I just don't, I can't build the caliber truck I want um, with that cab like that. So um, we'll have to get that painted. We'll have to get some tires. We'll put some aluminum wheels on after sandblast and paint. We'll have to fix all this up. We have the battery cover, but we need to clean all this up. And we'll have to sandblast and paint the front axle, the frame as much as we can get to, you know, and make it play the part. You know, it's a lot of work to, to build a truck like this, but that's why they're expensive when we sell them because you put in an awful lot of work to make it be the best truck that you can. Um, but I, I just don't know if we're going 10 foot dump or if we're going service body with a crane man it makes a great service body with a crane that's the way i'd like to go i don't have a service body i have to find one i've got a 10 foot dump I and mean, you could put a 12 foot dump on it but i i don't think i would i think it should be a 10 foot dump or it should be a uh service body with a crane i think that's most attractive but anyways you guys leave it in the comments what do you think would be the most attractive i'm actually going to put this truck up for sale the way it is without doing anything i'm going to take off the hoist because we're not going to leave that regardless um but just the way it is as a cabin chassis i'm going to leave the pto on and the reservoir i'm just going to take that hoist and these angle irons off and uh put it up for sale see if anybody wants it before i get elbow deep in it because once i start on this thing I got months of work, you know. Anyways, thanks for watching. Catch you on the next one. So for some of you that watch our videos from start to finish and you pick up on all the details and all the stuff um, and you always watch the video to the end, uh, you're probably getting a little more information than a lot of most people. Most people kind of skip around and don't catch everything and then they leave comments asking me a pile of questions of things that I addressed in the video. So. Uh, for those of you that did make it this far, thank you. We certainly appreciate you. And uh, the little bit of information we're going to share is the fact that I really think I'm going to make this into a four-wheel drive wrecker. That was one of my things I was holding on to. Uh, I thought it would be a very attractive wrecker if I move that axle back, being it's a double frame all the way back, and the setup that it is. So that is what I'm leaning towards. But there will only be a select few of you who will actually know what my intention is. Thanks for watching, guys.